Hi everyone, hope everyone is safe and well and uh, continue to produce those beautiful drawing and paintings. Uh, and I got a couple more pieces to look over today and um, I'm very excited to look over them. So let's, uh, I'll see you guys at the crib board. Very good draftsmanships. And I can tell that you are trying to figure out um, issues. So that's really good. And um, I think that's most important is every pieces that we, you know, we're working on, you know, are, you know, try to solve problems. And um, I, I'll give you some feedback that I, I that I have seen some issues in this drawings. Uh, well, first, no, first of all, I felt like this distance right here where the corner of the, the eyebrow to the ear, which that shows that base, that shows where the, uh, the, the cheek planes. Uh, and I feel like this is a little bit narrow. And uh, usually if you can you can try on yourself. There should be about two years when it hits hits uh, hits that corner of the ear. And I feel like this since we see a majority of most of her 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 side of her cheek. I feel like we need to open this space a little more. Uh, I think part of the reason is because I think that the with the actually the actual width of the eyes is a little wide, and um, because. For this eyes, for sure, I know it's too wide. It's, it's further away from us. It's, it it, it kind of rounds over to the other side, the eyeball, so it wouldn't be that wide. So what happens is that you start this pretty, you know, the width pretty wide, and ends up you just kind of base up that, and then get this eyes pretty wide as well. And it's just, so the overall front, front fascia of the face just gets, I think it just ex expands up too much. Uh, so, the, the way we fix it, we, we have to just kind of reduce this, this, you know, this width. And because we also looking from below her, um, I felt like that the nose could be, you know, my could use, can bring up a little bit. Maybe somewhere like right here. And definitely I need a little more evidence that we are looking from below her that um, I need to see a little more of that underplaying jaw. One thing very important to get a sense of where that the bottom jaw planes without showing detail in the shadows, we got to have this step back, this distance right here. Yours looks like your, your neck is just almost, almost tangent to the corners. Although just a little bit of separations, you can probably, you can push a little more so you know, bring the bring the back the the bottom and jaw back, and showing where that that neck lines and this and this swings out. And then your neck in this case probably going to be first also further back. And usually where I check to to know which each you know each planes or or each lines or each mark stopped, I always like to compare to diagonally as you no know, diagonally to another corner that I can compare with. For example, I can use this chin to see does this does this back of her neck it's lower or higher or aligned. So it's probably gonna be lower. So I'm probably just gonna bring this neck down like this. So here's your neck. So here's your collarbone. Here's your sternal, your, your neck muscles, sternal clitoid master muscles. And I'm gonna, so the way to construct the bottom plane, it's, you got to know, um, I, I call it six point, but, but you have to, at the um the three quarter you feel you not might you might not gonna see all the points. So first of all, we, we need to know where the front planes of the chin. So that you can we can line off from the from the lips. So that it's the that's about where the front plane and and front plane of the chin. Ideally, you know some people can be wider, some people can be narrow tape you no know, more narrower. So we got two points right there. In this case, this and then we got a jar point. Which that's the other thing I feel like. Well, let's pretend this is this. Let's just say this is exactly the the proportion of your head. So here's the jaw. 
right? John's gonna sit below the the, the nose, right? and I'm gonna so John corner that's a point. So I'm gonna connect this point to this no this point to this point. Okay. And then uh, so what happened is now we got a basically we have a tube. Basically, we have a tube that sits on her on her neck is a tube. So I'm gonna bring this point back to my neck, this point right here. I'm gonna bring it back like this and take this back like this. So that's that could, that actually is gonna be give me the bottom planes on my on my chin, and that actually is gonna go connect to my pit of neck right here. So what happened here is the the side is this the side of the neck, right? Now I'm gonna take this point and connect back to this point right here like this. That give me that bottom plane of the jaw. Usually often, now not all the time depends on light source. This is the plane that receive often receive reflect light down from the from the you know, from the from the color from the from the torso that bounce back to that jaw plane. And it's a very subtle plane, but if you don't show it, and then sometimes you just feel like the the face. Feel like a mask and just kind of it 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 just kind of stick stick onto the neck and there's no dimension to it and there's no connection to the face to the neck. So this plane is very important. The ear always be aware of the ear. Often um, from last week's in the critique, I also had another student make the ear a little too straight. You know, usually what I like to do is here's a pro like say here's a profile. The, the widest point on the head, and it's important important landmark of the head, is this point to this point, right? The front of the chin to the back corner of the head, the widest point of the head. And this is the, the point that determines the head is if it's tilting down or up. So if the head's tilting down, this point will, will rise and this point will kick back, right? So it's gonna be something like this. So, now it's higher, this lower. And so because this this relationship, it's such, such a dynamic relationship, you're just basically taking what I, it's it's you know connecting from the front end of my face to the way over to the back end of the face. The year is, is transition between it. Because the gesture wise is going diagonally like this, so probably also better to have your ear also sliding slightly tilted to that to that favor. So everything will feel more had that more um a smoother transition versus if you make the ear too straight, it feel like it's blocking that that momentum, right? So again, the better you know, it's better to make it slanted. Maybe the ear a little bit further back, the ear a little bit more in the front, and then when you also when you draw ears, don't draw the ear loop like perfectly see like this chisel it you know you got you no know, chisel it so you got different planes like this okay so one of evidence to show us that we're looking for the from below this view, it's this box relationship on eyebrow to the ear. It's a lot of people, you know, take for granted about the ear. They usually don't, you know, pay much attention to the ear. Actually, ear is very important because in this case, like I said, it's a uh, it help us to feel like we're looking from from underneath when you compare it to the eyebrow, and it's the silhouettes on you when you're drawing, you know, from view. It's that initial silhouette. I give you the sense of characters, you know, to that person. So it's a, uh, it's you know, it's important. So pay, you know, pay attention and study how to draw it. Okay, back to the, the, the face. 
again, I think we can. I can even shorten the forehead just a little bit. I would like to angle this forehead out a little more. Again, just to reinforce that perspective we feel from underneath. Be aware of the keystone. This is also a, a, a section I feel like it's a little cricket, right? So be aware of this point. Be aware of this point, which the other end of the eyebrow, beginning of the eyebrow, how it step down, kicks out, and how it is just supports that. Here's the ball of the nose, here's the wing. This, this is the front of the keystone, actually it's a, it's a down plane like this. This is the side of the keystone, which is that often we get a, a deep shadow sits on the side. Create that step down, that's so allow our eyeball to fit, to create the socket. Um, so top of the nose and side of the nose. And on this side of the eyes, like I said earlier, this is this already too wide as I know, All right? So we need to, um, if it, if it's, if it's going to be the right proportions, I'm going to zoom out so I can see better. I think prob probably going to be somewhere. Right here. And then your one of your, your tear dot going to be pretty close to the, the bridge. Sometime, Sometimes could you probably can actually I'm probably gonna be be hidden by the bridge gonna sit behind sit underneath and behind it. So that's uh, with that for your eyes. And then I don't you know how to draw the eyeball in the three quarter view. I don't have you know the, the time to to introduce all the all the um um the tactic. But if you go to my my head drawings uh, tutorials and uh, new master again new master cami, I I talked about it. And then so if I take this line over here's another tear dot, and then um. So when you draw the eye, eyelid, you, you got to get a sense of, of it's a ball, right? And then practice, practice just drawing eyeball in different different view in your sketchbook, because like I said, it's, it's something I it can't just make a few remarks. It it because every angle is slightly different. When eyes close, it's different. When eyeball rotates, it's different. Looking underneath, looking below, uh, above this all looking be slightly different. So you know, just you know, it's it, just practice, practice. You know, plant is drying the eyes and uh, in various angles in your sketchbook.
So um, the eyebrow, the actually what happened to the eyebrow, the eyebrow actually start from below the eye, sorry, below the eyebrow line. And then goes over above the eyebrow line. And it comes down like this. But again, sometimes we have we have obvious. There's, there's there's no just you know one, um, um, you know, there's always different different types. There's, and I, there are some people who have just kind of flat eyebrow, just sits just just sits right over over the um, you know the eyebrow line is. But if you look carefully, the eyebrow line often eyebrow often start below the eyebrow line and it kind of goes above it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use your hair to trim the face. And um, let's zoom out a little bit. Bring this out a little bit, okay. Um, and then the um, let's look at the lips. It looks it looks all right. Actually, it's, it's it's pretty good. I just feel like this filtrum right here, um, it's it's a little bit too even. It almost like you, you almost like you draw a perfect rectangle like this usually the filtrum is narrower to know uh no narrower below the the ball of the nose and it almost looks look like a tie like that i will push this this edge a little bit more because it it goes away from us. For this edge right here, I probably probably will not come so sharp down like this because this barrel is somewhere still had a little smooth around the surface. So what I would do is I would actually give it a a two step. One. And two. Lower lips comes up. Okay, and um, you can see right now overall, I think this these structures feels a little more, um, more solid. And then uh, let me close this massive face. So you follow a certain line, kick back. You can get a sense of that's where the cranians. Back here, and then your neck comes up. 
like this. Okay. Uh, so in that sense, and the other thing, your shadows, what you have in the shadow, it doesn't really support the structures. We got, you know, we got a plain forehead coming, uh, coming out like this, and then, you know, just coming down the eyeball. Cheek the cheekbone step out and then goes to the goes to the corner of the the lips, and then step out to the chin. So we need to you know use the shadow to support that. So first thing, the core shadow starts at the corner, right? So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take that core shadow right somewhere. You know somewhere in this area right and then it's probably like i say it's gonna step back and then this sink this all probably gonna sit under like this the cover and then also gonna the shadow gonna sit on this right side of the eyeball right side of the the lower eyelid and then often you're what you're gonna see you're gonna see a cat shadow coming exit out from the lower eyelid shadow and it goes over our our cheekbones and then because we got this this plane you know kicking forward and also you need to be aware you're looking from underneath so that break line about right here and then it's gonna it's gonna come up rise and gonna come about right here and then it's probably gonna come swing down then you just need to look how much distance away besides the lips and then it's gonna step out to that chin the the shadow might can sit back a little bit like what you have, but it just you still it still has to show the initial structures because it's it just because it's there it has to be you know it has to be there. shadow gets probably gonna get a little little darker and then in this case that what you had on uh, the shot the, the all the right playing like here the the nose seven nose the side of the wing the bottom of the the nose you know all probably all gonna be all gonna be in shadow sometimes again that's why you see sometimes because if light is strong enough, you might even see the cat shadow exit out here. Goes over the muzzle. This will be oh, this will be in shadows, and again from this point, you're gonna have cash shadow comes in, but comes over like this. So, um, Some monkeys, kind of more intense area. All right. So, um, study the structure, of, you know, structure of the head, and and like I said, just same as you know, same as the the eye exercise I want you to do. If you can understand the planes of a head, the structure of a head really well, and um, 
well, there's a couple of benefits. First of all, you can imagine, you can draw imagination ahead in any given perspective as you wish. Second of all, you can also invent shadow shape because you know the reason why you might think, well, how do I know where all this, you know, the shape or shadow, the placement of the shadow is because it's all, it's all because I know where, oops. It, it's all because I know where are the corners. Shadow begins at the corners, right? But then you, so you just you have to study knowing where those corners are. And corners are where's the two planes meet. And what that means means is it's, you know, it's it's a box idea, right? So figure out, practice and, you know, study the planes of a head and, 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 and practice enough that you can draw the planes of a head out of your head in any given, you know, given view. And that would be really, you know, really beneficial. The portraits here was, was, some expressions in it. Um, actually, I, I can feel the uh, the, the um, intensity of expression through, you know, through the tone that you're putting down. So that's really nice. So there's a few things we can we can go over, and then um, well, first thing is let's let's narrow that forehead a little bit. I think that the forehead is a little wide, and then um, so right here here it's where the front plane of the forehead is only gonna last about where somewhere in between the eyebrow. This area, this uh, around this, where the keystone um, is. So and then and then be, and then besides that, it's gonna start turning to the corner, and then from where your core core shadow, uh, where you have your core shadow, that's where this this the side of the uh, the face. So here's the front corner, and so in this case, we already jump into the 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 side plane. So I'm gonna bring it this in. And then this can hide behind the 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 eyeball and the, the cheekbones and the protrudes out. So your jawbone starts about right here and it kicks forward and here's your chin. And then uh here's your here's your ear. All right. So that in that sense, this um we're gonna turn that hairline a little quicker. Bring bring this this hairline forward a little bit. Close this distance a little bit. And the other thing, when you draw hair, think about a, also think of them a shape as a group. So depends on. Um, first of all, to see, we can, I can kind of see there's a sense of gesture to it. And also based on the, the planes of, planes of the head. So let's just say, okay, this here's my, my midsection. So where's that midsection group out here? That bright, so this is my midsection right here. So think that that's a it's a piece with my second piece, right, and then my third. The next next thing I would do is that your neckline's a little it's a little sh it's a little short. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um elongate that neck a little bit. Sometimes, oh, actually, 
um, when you draw on most of those up, I always tend to think of a compositions. What's the best way to put it? In this case, I'm thinking somewhat, you know, like, you know, almost as here's your, here's your, here's your page. And, um, so you got a compositions come, you have, so you have a head tail and going on like this. So we need something to balance. So that's why I'm thinking to having your shoulder to see this shoulder right here. Take some, I keep it a little more, more, more horizontal and wider here and narrow here. So you have a different native space as well. And to keep, you know, to keep it balanced. I might even, you might even think of value, maybe, maybe having darker here and transition gradations into the light, you know, this way. So, um, yeah. okay. The other things, the light, it just, it's, it just, it just isn't as important as the shadow. You have a really nice shadow shape, but I think your light shapes need to design a little bit more and also it has to besides it besides has to according accordingly to the planes and also this case also according to your expressions well we had to break pretty tense expressions so i think what we can do is also to see if we can design so much your light also has intensity I'm okay probably going to use a lot of sharp you know, a lot more of a tense sharp shapes Sharp shapes, more stronger, more aggressive shape. So you can feel that tension, not just through the shadows, also through the light. See all this, make it sharp, heavy. Again, think about designing a character. If you're going to design a, um, more cheerful, happy, you know, happy characters, you're probably going to use a lot of round shape versus, you, you know, using, using uh, designs, a, a, a villain like characters, you're probably going to use a lot of kind of jagged, uh, edges and in this case you just you are you are telling us this is a very intense emotion person and his expressions i think all the muscles on the faces it's all going to get tensed up and when things get tense up the line can get start get become more firm you know things not going to be soft and round right things going to or or you no know, the edge is not going to be so much too soft as well so everything going to be more intense and i think again triangular firm edge 
um, that's given more of the intense uh, expressions. So, yeah, so be aware that, you know, be aware the, the light, you know, the light shape is just as important as, um, as the shadows. I, you probably can also open this, the mouth, shadow in the mouth, a little opens up a little bit. Just to give it a little more of the attitude. So you have, see how I beef up all the edges and shape a little bit. To so make it look more intense. See a lot of jack edge. A lot of these kind of thrown jacket edge. All right, so hope that helps. And then uh, um, again, I, I also had a, I love drawing expressions. I you know when I teach head drawing classes, we have a week just working on expressions. And um, I had a, 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 a tutorials um, in new master academies and a pretty, you know, I'm pretty proud of it. It's just basically, as we talked about facial, you know, facial expressions, if we get to get a chance, you know, to take a look at it, I think that will also, you know, be helpful. All right. Thank you, uh, Gary. So maybe I'll see you next time. I like your line weights. You have this kind of a very elegant line weights, which helped give this this kind of um, kind of fluid, you know, fluidity to your drawings. But what I want you to watch out for, I want you to be aware of, of corners. Like corners, for example, like where the top of shoulder meets the, the back of the arm that give you the corner. The corner is where, where the structure connect, where's, where's each, each structure ends, the other structure begins. Also corner is, is it's, it's, a, a, it's a visual reference point. And it's important to have that point because that's how we compare as an artist. So we need those points to compare, compare the axis, like where the other side, where the other point of the shoulders, compare to see where the parts end. Like for example, if I don't know where the hand exactly, you know, sits, I can compare, use that point. I can use a nipple, you know, to draw an axis, axis line to see, okay, that, that hand is, you know, somewhere how far below that nipple, or I can use this point to see, you know, to, to compare to where, how far that point or how much degree that point, you know, uh, uh, angles out. I can use that point to compare with the knee, or maybe I can use this point to compare where is the, you know, the back, back heel, you know, so on. And I use that all the time. And when I compare it, I don't compare it just horizontally. I don't compare it just, you know, just as, just typical grid, horizontal and vertical. I like to compare diagonally. Because what that is, it's it's what we call rhythm. It's a balance balancing act. Overall, overall, you have more dynamic comp dynamic composition this way, and also keep your drawing balanced. So we need some we need some corners, and um, you know, for example, so it's not so much as just linear expressions. Also, you want to get a sense of. All right, so here is the corner of the hip. All right, so it's not very, again, drawing is still not, it's still not super structural, but at least it gives some evidence of where the, you know, where the pinch and where is our, the, you know, get a sense of where that top and the side of the side of the hip. So it has structurally, if it, it feels more solid. Um,
we can open this drawing up a little bit. It feels a little too squashed. Same thing I need to know, where is that structure end, right? And so what happened is, now you got a rib cage, we got a, a partial oblique. That's what I feel like you're missing. And then below that, it's your hip. Continue with the center lines, very important. That's where we're gonna take you to gluteus splits and make sure your dominant side is toward, towards the right. Okay, uh, this drawing right here, which is it's it's really it's beautiful. The line you say I like the line was really nice. Um, I want the what I feel like this whole upper torso is is, is you know is is pretty nice to draw. Although I I usually don't do not like to have a a point like what you have here for her arm that kind of lines up you know, horizontally like this. I usually like to have one either. I usually like to, like I said earlier, like to use a diagonal relationship. So either you, I'm gonna have this point higher, then I have the inner inner arm lower. Like this. Or you can even just draw and make. Here's the top of shoulder, here's the my rib cage. I probably keep the stem a little more flat because she's I'm assuming she's laying on the model stand. What I feel about this drawing, it's I would like to have a little more, just a slightly more uh, definition on the, on the on the back of her where her leg is, because I almost feel like there's it's it's a little bit unclear in turn as your overall presentations. There's you don't have you know because some because your your upper torso has such a degree of finish, we need a little more. We need the bottom. Parts also have somewhat that 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 you know somewhat of that presentation is what you have in the, in the upper torso to have this kind of closure. Instead, feel like things just start get get scattered and our eyes just kind of wandering out. You know, maybe just that, right? And then, uh, but it, at least the overall, the drawing overall feels a little more complete, right? So all this is a nice. This was good, and um, when you come back, um, this you want you need to watch out the sh the, the 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 shadow shapes. Don't repeat. See how this these shadows, even that, they feel re really kind of repetitive. And in nature, probably won't, won't do that. You might do, you might kind of do it twice, but then like say the third time, you know, always that third, you have to uh, change it. So, I mean, let's just make these two pretty similar. I'm gonna open this, the third one up, and maybe I'll, I'll square this a little bit because it's showing where that, you know, that, that oblique and this I'm gonna squeeze out a little bit because this is where it shows that hip and this the compression of the hip. Okay, you see how overlap works so really well. You give a sense of where the the hip and then the leg in the front. Same as here. See how the shadow you, you shadow you drew looks very even in terms of the, the dimensions. If if there's a form coming towards you.
you probably want to make shadows. If you want to come in way towards like coming and make it just really big, making come here is a kneecap, making this is coming way facing towards us. You probably want to make a shadow which is thinner away from us and thicker when you're coming towards us. Like that, right? So that way, almost it's like drawing a path, you know, you're drawing a pathway going into a distance. Right, same, that's the same ideas. So don't make even, don't make the shadow shape even. All right, all right, so good luck. And uh, this, these are great practice and just keep, you know, keep going and uh, maybe I'll see you next time. Um, there are some good things happening here. I liked you what you did with um, the, on the thigh, which using your broad strokes to, to sculpt over the form that we can feel this kind of cylindrical volume. I had this kind of very impressionist on approach using a broad stroke to suggest a long axis on that forearm, and then um um and also you are you, know, you are thinking about shapes. Now I can see you looking at this half tone shape and versus you no know, the shadow shape, and uh, also your highlight has a you know your help the the broad strokes on your highlight also also suggest gestures. So all those are good things. But when I saw the paintings, uh, what I felt was, I felt like he's floating, someone is floating on this panel. You got this black mass behind him, which not quite suggests as a cat shadow because it doesn't really, you know, look like a cat shadow of him uh, versus the shadow below his, his, his uh, shin. That feels more of a, of a cat shadows. And um, so, so he felt like he's trapped into this almost this 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 black hole, and um, and you know that's why that's why I feel like he's kind of floating on this on this board. Uh, so first thing, what I would do is let me let me retrieve my marking. So first thing I would do is I would um. Select a, a dark background value you have there, and um, I'm gonna just tone it down the tone it down your background. Just drop it down. Like this. Oops. And then uh, I didn't know how that happened. Um, and then uh, next thing I would do is I would uh, lighten your floor so you feel like you know again i want to create this this you know secure environment for him to situate in you have some this kind of pink uh intense color in, in the in the shadow so i'm gonna also to you know to pick an intense color um so later we can also bounce that light into the shadows And I'm gonna step down and drop down some of that intensity, create more of a, some type of gradations. And then sometimes what I like to do is I like to 
take some of my floor the intense color and sneak into the background like this trying to find trying to find a way to kind of harmonize so if i zoom out we should get start get a sense of this more of a graphic um layout which you should see more we can tell where's the i'm gonna extend the floor a little bit you know where he's you know he's sitting on this red floor carpet whatever and um so next thing i would do is i would take maybe not that red maybe a little bit maybe a little bit orange i'm gonna sneak that orange into him mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, since the floor is it's at the bottom, so I'm gonna to find most of the bottom plane, the plane facing down, like right here on the chest. I'm gonna actually just put some of the intense color in there, maybe on the arm armpit. I can put it on this bicep. I definitely, definitely right here at that full, at the full arm, maybe a little bit of the palm right there, and this whole, you know, whole bottom planes of his of his rib cage. And also, and also here's top of stomach, here's bottom of stomach. So here's also gonna uh, re receive some of the some of the orange. I can put some orange right here. I'm not really worried about it right now. I'm just gonna you know put them in. I well, I do think about the shape a little bit, and, and um, here I just kind of try to. To kind of trying to tend some orange to it but the knee right here since this has a bone structure in there i'll, I'll make sure i create a, a a shape that suggests where that knee is uh you know maybe a little bit here and maybe a little bit here Okay, and then um, so the now I'm looking at the shin. The shin is facing his own, you know, own. Um, it has is facing his own planes. You know what that means? All all the 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 reflector light I just suggest is mostly they're down planes or they're in more of a closed kind of closed environments versus the shin. Like I said, it's it sits you know it sits vertically in this kind of open. You know, facing this open environment, so it's going to receive a little bit different light. Probably just going to receive more light. So what I'm going to do, just to kind of play that off, I'm going to shift to maybe a little more. You know, maybe just a little more yellow. Then maybe suggest somewhere over there has some maybe has some yellow you no know, yellow light just you know. so you might think wow that's a, that's very intense color right there but my, I'm not so worried about it especially in the oil paints and the more you start getting into the rendering process you no know, dirty the paint paint uh, paint you're gonna get that what when I say dirty that means the intensity is gonna sacrifice some of the intensity and then so you know so I don't mind to start. You know some of the color more saturated color in there because what then when I work in you know going back and 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 start you know start developing more details it's probably going to sacrifice some of those intensity and so it's you know it's uh and usually people painting too desaturate anyway you will oh we always in this kind of protective bubble afraid to go you know kind of pop that bubble we always kind of paint in that that safe zone so for me I like to kind of try things like experiment if things goes off too much and then I, I learned that for the next time I'll make sure I you know I that I know how to adjust the next thing I'm looking at is your face which is when I'm looking at a face I feel like there's not enough separation of light and shadow you have a pretty you know you have a, a pretty strong um, reflect light right there and then the face also is in light so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna Uh, Dargan. Or does your face a little bit? 
I'm going to start with the corner of the forehead. Follow with that cheek, follow with that cheekbone, coming down the side of the face. I'm just going to think of a mask. Just think of my shapes. And we're going to continue uh, with your shadows. I'm going to just throw this over, throw this over. I'm going to zoom out. I'm not down this side of that nose. So I'm at the, at the bottom of the cash on the bottom of the nose. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna drop down the value and I'm gonna let me do this but nice. I'm gonna darken the cash shadow at the bottom of the nose because again it's a more small area small area has a smaller has has a darker shadows And the next thing I'll do is I will reshape your hair. And then I'm going to use what I also like to do often is use the side of the hair to show where the side plan of the forehead and also drop this down and to goes right into the ear to you know to kind of frame that ear. Yes, it's just, just, just some of these highlights. And then, um, go back to the dark. Clean out that, the shadow in this eyes. And make this to cash out the note below the nose even darker.
I'm about to highlight that hair a little bit more. Okay, so if now if I, if I zoom out, you're gonna, it's, it's gonna start, it feels, things start feel unified a little bit. And then uh, I think at this point I can come in to, you know, to darken my, my shadow a little bit. Earlier I said thing, I can drop out some of that intensity. And also what I'm going to do, I'm going to reshape your, your torso a little bit. See now, certainly it doesn't feel that orange as before. The next thing is I could even go even darker. Oops. To pushing some of these darker dark like this armpit. Usual so for darker dark, I don't, um, some darker dark. Don't use just black. You just are uh, usually using warm black, or you just like to, so I shift to a little bit redder. That's what I like to use. Usually, what if I paint, I add some lizard and crimson into the black, so it's it's more a lively, um, versus just a flat kind of paste, kind of um, pasty black. I like to bring a little some light in the shadow right here. And then I'm also going to do it. It's, uh, I'm going to also going to shape your light cell, the torso a little bit. This leg coming awfully large towards us because it's, you know, the knee coming, you know, coming close to the, to the viewers so and probably better to make it a little, probably extra large, larger than, you know, than you think.
I'll go back. I lost my shadow shape. It's okay. I'll go back and redevelop it. Sometimes by painting impressionists, that's things you will probably do is that you have to kind of uh, do a lot of kind of try and error you know, um, type of process to see is that going to work or is not going to work. And I'll, I'll bring it back to what I had. And then at the end, we can, you know, pump up some nice strong highlights. Which you, you already have. And then... And also this arm is closer to us. This arm right here. So I'm going to also bring this arm a little bit larger. Can start just pushing some of the these contrast um and then maybe i can even drop soften the hair a little bit or if you want to you know lighten some other background And then um, I also this is kind of what the, my my process my kind of my my process my process thinking that I that if I paint um, and also I, I did a a mock up painting of of yours just to get you know, kind of uh, give you see the possibility what you could you know what you could do. And then, um, so first thing it's make sure he, he, the model has to be feel like situated in a, in a, like a real a secure environment. Now you can feel the floor and the, the, uh, the backgrounds, all the, the intense color stuff. Like I said, you can either add it back in once you have the, um, You know, once once all the all the the values right, like I said, the light and shadow separation is clear. You are dark. You are mid, mid, You are you are dark. Start. You are dark. You are gray. You are light. Those are you know three major three major values. You really have to know where you know where to group them. You know, same as landscape. It's, it's landscape will, will be you even have to because there's a lot more elements. So uh, usually you have a single figure, probably you just have, you know, you might just have a flat background. So then that's a little easier. So what I did, so long as you can control your value, right? Which we have a dark, in this case, we have a dark environment. And so at the beginnings, it just like, I, I keep them, you know, keep my, my, my palette pretty you know, minimal. You know, I'm not trying to get too crazy. Once things, everything looks right, then I can sneak in colors, right? So I sneak in, 
I noticed the background have some of that that green in there, and just I just you know I just want like I said, just experiment to see how it will look. Look, you know, it's it gonna work or it's not gonna work. But when you step back, when you, you know you're not notice, you're not gonna notice that's gonna be green. You just know it's just dark. But when you step into close to painting, notice oh, there's nice intense green in there, and then I throw some of the green on the on the on the ground just to kind of harmonize, you know, create some textiles and you know, some you know some textures, and then uh and I'll leave some of that pink on his on his chest just to give some a sense of warm kind of warm, um feel uh to him and uh i'll sneak some color here then there but i think you know what's hold again what's hold hold up this painting is that that's just a simple that this definition clear definition clear definition on the shadows shade versus light shape the background versus the foreground and the uh the gradation you know, or the gradation light to dark so we know where the light source coming you know coming from that's that's what nature give give you has to be cons you know, consistent and then like other stuff like i say you can the edges you know all that stuff hard edge soft edge and then you can you know you can make that decision to see what you, you know how you want to play it anyway so hope this will help you and um good luck on your next painting what a lovely painting here and uh i think the there's some feedback I can give you today, and I think, and it's, um, you know, creating some anchor to your, you know, to your piece to help to, you know, um, communicate with the viewer. It also means how to group, you know, group your value, you know, to, you know, to create, you know, to create, you know, aerial perspective, things pulling things out, push things away. One thing I noticed when I saw this painting is um, this area right here was that the flat flat black area on the horn it creates a lot of contrast for me i think we need to could do something there to to easy that up a little bit and plus you know plus this and, and it kind of also almost compete with this you know shadow down the lower left corner this is actually my favorite part of painting it's got that beautiful richness nice you no know, nice dark value but it still has some some also has some warm and cool in it and then um and and the other area that's that's kind of gets a little confused is on the other side this area right here so that's a negative space you know right between the horn um i for me i probably would would, would using lighter value instead of dark value in there because that should probably should be the atmosphere and the environment behind it and uh so almost feel like this itself as a horn and um so we, we could fix that um the the other thing we can probably push a little bit is might be just put it's just I me mean, push a little bit of the renderings at the at the uh the muzzle just create a little more a little more plain structures because i feel like overall it's, it's pretty you know pretty light you know the top you know top planes the, the muzzle and the, the front um uh, no, they all pretty much just has same value. And if a light hits on, if a light hits on the top plane, and the oh, the whole front of the muzzle probably could you know step down the value a little bit. Uh, and and then also what we can do is, and we can clarify the structure of the horn a little bit more. You've done a beautiful job painting, you no know, painting those. Don't get me wrong. I think what we can do is, just like the left hand side here, we can see a clear structures. It's a tricky, it, it's a tricky structure as well because you kind of twist every, you know, every second. You, we got a pretty clear structure over here, but here I think we can also, um, what I'm think what you done, uh, what you have done, which is great. It's you see how the proportion wise is thicker here and it goes tapers up going into distance, but when we get to here, it's a little bit. It's, it became a little less clear, so we can probably also to construct that. Maybe it don't have to be big as the left side, but just clear clarify that plane a little bit. And um, and when I say anchor, it's like we could maybe we could sneak in some of the you know some of the dark here and there just to to see if we can sit. You no, know, set this um um sheep out a little bit, and I, you know, we'll see because I don't want to end up making it too dark, 
and I feel like it's more of an indoor environment because the, obviously this is more of the ambient light than outdoor. So let's see what can we do. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna, what, no, try. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually just select your, So I want your background color. I'm going to darken it a little bit. And then I'm going to try to see if I... Right now, I'm just randomly finding some places just to, to darken a little bit, just to see if we can set up the, the, the horn of the sheep. In that case, the whole the the whole um, sheep as well. But I also said I don't want to make this too much of an indoor. So, and then leave some of them in there and just. And then like the blue you have on the top, so I'm just gonna leave that. I almost feel like it's just gonna the feel just kind of kind of diminishing to the 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 sky. And it feel kind of goes into the, the atmosphere. Um, and let's let's fix this flat area of that that dark um, horn. And as since overall you got this kind of gold, almost kind of a kind of golden weed, and maybe we can use some of that to to throw in as a reflector light. So just less black, and then notice you have, um, there's a lot of, well, kind of more of a, a a dark gray, and um, to think that we need that that you know that, um, that golden color that you, that you have to kind of to balance it. So because you don't want overall the painting feels too gray, and um, so by throwing some of this kind of warm shadow in there. It helped to keep it a little bit alive. And I'm going to open this space right here.
And that way I'm actually, because of that, I'm actually gonna open this part of the horn. And then by opening up this, it helped to bring it forward, right? So right now you got, you got sheep, you got horn, you got feel, all this stuff that going on. So you have to, you know, we can use the, you know, the contrast to, you know, to push, to push things forward. We can use scale to push things forward. We can use the color intensity to push things forward. And then um, the, the scale probably going to be the most, the, the most powerful ones to, you know, to do because just bigger, as we know, things are larger, coming closer to, closer to us, things smaller and uh, sits it back in this and also edges, softer edges. But it can, you can see I'm not on top of this right now. On top of this piece, I'm not really playing with the edges, and uh, you can still get the sense of things. You know, things that are sitting, you know, in kind of slowly diminishing the distance. And uh, by by skill, you can see this horn, this part is coming forward. And also, if I really push it. You know, and, and it would really help to you know sit sit that out. And same thing, I'm gonna do that on the left hand side. It's not so much about each rim on that horn; it's about the whole mass. So if you know, it fits in there, actually, let's bring it out a little even more. I want to feel like it's catching the light above. I make it even slightly warmer than the right size. You can tell again, just to, you know, to play off some of the, 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 um, the warm and cool, the, and um, the color temperatures. And also, like I said, maybe help to sit this warm out a little bit more than the one on the right. Maybe make that a little more important than the one on the right. And let me zoom out and see how it overall feels. Things, no, I'm going to clean things up a little bit. So usually what I'll do, notice that the way I paint, it's, um, I started pretty, I guess I started pretty loose pretty fast. And it just kind of sometimes paints out my, my intuitions. Feel I feel things need here and there, need dark here, need dark there. And the, the benefit of that is that, um, I would sometimes I might, I might might find some some surprises, and that that's you know that I can I can learn from and something that can surprise me because I I want to have it obviously I would like to have a process that that's um you know that I can enjoy and I can get you know that I could just like everybody like you know people like surprises obviously hopefully it'll be good surprises and sometimes yes you're right because it's a it's a very impressionist way to work and the painting can can go south if you don't you know if you don't manage right in that sense is that if you have a solid drawing skill it will come handy because you can kind of you can come back and save it if you you know if you're drawing got got you know uh, um you know for example 
for example, if my, I might take my background paint color and paint over the foreground um, just to see maybe I can create more of a har color harmony, but, but then at the same time, oops, I destroyed the, the proportional horn, then I need to come back and redraw it. By redrawing it, you create a better edge too, because you, you're not really painting at the edges of it, of everything, you're actually painting over. So it's like, instead of painting just next to each other, but in this case, you're painting over each other. And then like that way you get better edges, but at the same time, you might destroy that previous proportion that you need to go you need to come back and, you know, and then re reshape it. That's no, that's the, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so I always step back from your painting. Here, obviously, I can zoom out. Step always. I, when I paint in my studio, I'm always standing up so I can move back and forth until I get to more of the final stage, which start start getting to rendering. That I sit down and and you know switch to small brushes and be a little more meticulous. But most of the time, I'll be standing. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually leaning myself back just to check. I'm gonna come some of the brush strokes. Paint over, just like say, go paint over it. Okay. Um, so let's look at the, the muzzle. So what I can do, and this is kind of very subtle things, I can just, you can just come back and kind of, you got a top plane here and a side plane, and just come back and just make that side plane a little bit darker. And then also the front plane, I might also probably want to make a little bit warmer because that's where the, the nose and the mouth, which is where we breathe, which give a little more life and uh, I can even a little bit warmer. We got design a shape. I can bring it up. Maybe that help to to gauge back to the top part of the sheep. Sheep. And maybe you can even create a highlight.
Oops. That's not what I want. Here I can also give a little highlight to feel like where the top plane is. Maybe not that much. Okay. Um Let's see. Now I'm going to see if I can use so again some of this golden color to actually I'm going to get a little bit darker to see if I can sneak in some of that dark and uh, create some anchor. And maybe some inside in the the weed, and then um maybe here to keep, so it's not so gray. See the thing is now. So what I just did, I I pinged in the dark, and then I, now I zoom out and notice the the negative space started. It, it doesn't. It feels. It feels less interesting because it stuff flattened it flattened the top, and then uh. So I'm gonna go back, and open and then go back and open this up. See how that makes it better, creates almost gonna uh kind of creating this this echoing, gonna kind of lift up the whole the reed. So if I since I'm I'm lifting this side up, I'm probably also gonna try to see if I can bring this up a little bit as well.
And then you can some of these these um weed you can actually just take it for me I you can try to take all the way out out the out the, the, the pictures to show you know it helped to sit set it forward as well. So I'm going to leave bigger close to us. Off the edge, and then, uh, and then, and you can see I can. Good. So that, now it's just kind of just trying to error, kind of trying to error type of idea. But over in the overall, I wanted to to make sure I'm creating, you know, creating an anchor, some of the anchor points on on the um on the piece, so allow the viewer to. The, you almost say you take the viewer to your painting and bring them around, right? Bring it into the atmosphere, bring it out, you know, some darker area. See the darker area that the, you know, all these little dark that I'm sitting, setting them up with different, the variety of different sizes, different shapes. It's going to help to create, you know, create this, this read. Know, to the audience so i can so you can so it help help them to read this way and also the the atmosphere help us to help them to read this directions and the muzzle help them to pushing out this directions all right not a good run so for the one who have enjoyed our critique form please do um and so if you would like to get critique like this and it looks like we've got more instructor on board and that's an exciting things because we always look to share our thoughts and um, so again, if you would like to be part of it and go on to New Master Academy website um, and we'll see you there.